refinancing is the topic of our Tip Tuesday today. So welcome back to Tip Tuesday. Hi, Ryan. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And let's dive right into the process of refinancing, Ryan. So take it away. Yeah, you know, with with rates being at, at 20 year highs right now and a lot of people still itching to buy, you know, a conversation we're having a lot with clients is about refinancing, you know, because rates are predicted to drop uh, in 2024. Uh, a popular saying has been marry the house, but date the rate. So this means find the right house that you want to stay in for years, but know you could refinance into a lower rate later. So you're not stuck with that rate for 30 years. And that's what a refinance does. Uh, you know, it allows you to pay off your current mortgage and replace it with a new one at current mortgage rates. So, you know, if you have a conventional rate, you know, right now they're maybe in the, the sevens, but they drop to the high fives next year. Anyone who bought this year will be a great candidate to refinance into a lower rate and reduce their monthly mortgage payment. Uh, another great thing about refinancing, you could roll the closing costs into the mortgage. So you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. And also, if you have enough equity, you could take out a loan for more than what you owe, and you could keep the difference as cash in hand for home upgrades or even debt consolidation. It's called a cash out refinance. So, you know, with rates projected to drop next year, it's expected that we'll have a lot of buyers taking advantage of refinancing into lower payments. That's wonderful. I know we're starting to get a ton of questions already as we're into the fourth quarter of 2023. So great information. Now, if they don't roll their closing costs into the loan, what's the typical cost? To yeah, refinance? so so there, there will be a lender fees, you know, processing and underwriting. Uh, there'll be title fees to, to process the transaction. And sometimes you need an appraisal. So sometimes it's usually maybe about $2,000 to $2,500 total. Uh, you could pay it out of pocket or you could roll it into the mortgage either way. And one of the great things about it is we could usually work it out where you skip a mortgage payment. You know, let's say you close in September, you know, you could skip your October payment. So your first payment's November 1st. And on top of that, you have an escrow account where you have taxes and insurance saved up. We have to start a new one. So you get a refund for that escrow account. So when you add in, you know, the skip payment, the refund for the escrow account you currently have, you know, sometimes it's just a wash. That's great. And one more question. <laughs> so what what's the best scenario to, to refi? Is it an, an, you know, half a point, a full point? What, what are we talking about? Yeah, you know, it could be different for everybody. It depends on how long you plan on, you know, living in the house. You know, it might not make sense to have that $2,500 or could even be $3,000 depending on how high of a loan amount for all the closing costs. Um, if, if you're not going to stay in the house that much longer, but if, if you are, and you're going to make that money back with the savings that you have in interest, it could make sense to refinance, but usually kind of a rule of thumb, a lot of people say you want rates to drop by at least a percent to really justify, uh, doing the refinance, but everything's a little bit different, but that's kind of a good rule of thumb. Good rule of thumb. Awesome, Ryan. Well, great information. If you guys have any questions, you know how to get a hold of us, a hold of us. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Bye, Bye <everyone>. Ryan. <laughs>